Joe from Cole's Music. And, uh, you know, during this pandemic, we all have more time on our hands than we've had ever in our lives. Um, and sometimes you're just looking for something to do. I want to talk about a technique that's not a requirement for woodwind players. In fact, this is something that we think is just for the brass players. Uh, back in the 1990s, uh, I had to do a couple of recording sessions that uh, we, we were doing transcriptions of a clarinet piece and a saxophone piece that were originally recorded by a musician named Jimmy Dorsey. Now, Jimmy Dorsey was a prominent saxophone and clarinetist in the late 20s, 30s, and 40s. But what Jimmy was originally was a trumpet player. And Jimmy had, uh, in fact, at, at the age of 12, he appeared with Suze's band and um, appeared up in New York City uh, in recitals as a trumpet player. So late in life, or late for a musician, in his, I guess well into his teens, he came to the saxophone and then to the clarinet. But because he originally played trumpet, he could double and triple tongue. And when he started on a reed instrument, he carried that right over. And in the 20s, there were several players, Al Galador, Frank Trumbauer, who were reed players who could double and triple tongue quite well and quite fast. Uh, later on, the technique kind of got lost. It was something that we weren't using that much. In the 20s, by the way, there was several uh, method books written on how to double and triple tongue on a reed. So we've gotten to the point now where Many people claim that you can't double and triple tongue on a reed. There's a book I have written by a, a prominent educator and clarinetist who claims that you can't double and triple tongue on a reed. Obviously, he's never heard the recordings of Jimmy Dorsey or Frank Trumbauer. So when I practice, there's three parts to my practice session. One is warming up. So I will take a third of my practice and do my scales, my arpeggios, uh, things to relax and to warm up. Then a third of my practice will be preparing for concerts or recitals that I have coming up. So there's the material that you have to do. What nobody thinks to do is at the end of your practice you should do something just for the fun of it. Just something that, oh this would be something that would be neat to do. Uh, could be anything from playing tunes, trying to work on playing by ear, uh, bending notes which I talked about in another, another video. Uh, but double and triple tonguing is, is interesting and kind of fun to do. So where do you get started? Well, don't go to a brass player because brass players articulate both times on the roof of their mouth. So they don't have a reed to touch. So a lot of times what they're telling you is not going to help you in the sense of, well, how are we doing it? This is how I do it. The first articulation is off the reed. So I am touching the reed. The second articulation is off the roof of my mouth. So to start out, I recommend thinking tu, which is the syllable off the reed, and ku, which is the syllable off the roof of your mouth. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the tip of my tongue and touching the reed, then taking the middle of my tongue and touching the roof of my mouth. So I'm going tu, ku, tu, ku, tu, ku, tu, ku. Now what you could do is just practice that vocally first. When it comes to the instrument, sometimes I'll recommend just doing the ku syllable, so practicing trying to get that to sound like you're touching the reed, even though you're not. So in other words, that's off the roof of my mouth. And then slowly alternating, now my reed's dry, between the roof of my mouth, I mean the tip of the reed and the roof of my mouth. So I'm touching reed, roof of mouth, reed, roof of mouth. Once you get that to a certain speed, then what you can do is a series of five eighth notes. So you're going tuku tuku tu, tuku tuku tu. That's 
the syllables. Now I'm using two in ku. Now that is a way to get started, but you're going to find as you go faster that two in ku is going to be kind of slowing you down. So that's where I transition because what I want to do is remember when I'm touching the reed, the air is right at the reed. But when I go back and touch the roof of my mouth, now the air is slightly back from the reed and it's got to get to the reed in a hurry to make sure it, the note shows up where it's supposed to show up. So that ku syllable kind of gives you an explosion of air to get right to the reed. But as you go faster, you can kind of switch to going dugga 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 da. And that's how you get that. And and so and you can get it faster and faster and faster and then until you know Take it as fast as you want. So that's double tonguing. In another video, I'll talk about triple tonguing, uh, which uses the same principle in a slightly different way. But the only thing with triple, I would, I think it's easier to learn the double tonguing first and then go to triple tonguing. But double tonguing on a reed instrument.